for me and the way that I work, I am perfectly comfortable using Pac-Man and Peru commands directly. I don't have any issue working with stuff on the terminal. But I know there is a lot of people out there who prefer to have a TUI or a GUI installed instead. There are tons of options out there and today we are looking at one of the fairly simple solutions. This is an application known as PackSeq, which is a TUI interface for managing your Arch packages, not just packages with Pac-Man, but also from the AUR as well. So let's go and search for something like Xterm, for example. Now, by default, you are going to be focused on the search bar, so you can start typing right away. It's going to take a little bit of time to do that searching just because, you know, it doesn't have anything cached and has to go and check the AUR as well. In this case, Xterm is the first result we see. This is in the extra repo, and the Y next to it indicates that I have this installed. But there are other things in here that I don't have installed, things that are on the AUR, Xterm Alacrity Simlink, Xterm Git, so on and so forth. I was scrolling through the list using my arrow keys, but the J and K keys are going to work as well. There is actually a slight difference between the way they function. So if we press the up arrow key all the way up to the top, it is going to take us over to the search bar. But if you do the same thing with the J and K keys, it's not actually going to take you all the way up. I think the reason why it's like that is because if you go and K into the search bar and you press K again, it's then going to start typing the letter K instead of moving you around. So if you do like to move around with the J and K keys, you can still jump between the boxes, but the way you do it is by pressing tab instead. This is the way that I prefer working. It just feels a little bit more comfortable. Now, the way the searching works is fairly rudimentary. It's not doing things like regexes or globs or anything else like that. It's just doing a basic string comparison. So the way that I've got it set up is to take the term that I search for and then check if that term is at the start of any of the package names. There is another way that it can function. So if we go and press Control S, this is going to open up the settings. This can be set from the config file as well, but we're just gonna do it from here for now. I'll show you that a bit later. If we go and press Tab to get over to that window, or if you want to, you can actually click on these different sections as well. A lot of terminal apps have this. I generally don't like to use it though. So we're going to tab over that and then either press the tab key or press the down arrow key to get down to the thing where it says search mode. So if we go and press enter on that, set it to contains and then go over to apply and save here, this is going to change it over to doing a different search method. I don't particularly like this method. The main reason for this is because you can search for something that might be a common term, but it's at the start of a name that you search for. And then you get all of these other things that may or may not be the thing that you want. All of these have the word term in there somewhere, but you know, it's, it's not easy to sort through. Whereas if you go and set it to start with instead, what it's gonna do is make sure the thing you search for is always going to be at the start. And now the results are a lot more manageable. And if you have it configured, Control A is going to do an AUR upgrade. In my case, I do have it configured. So give it a moment, it's gonna look for AUR upgrades. And there we go. I'm gonna say, don't do anything right now. And it'll take us back to the application. Another thing that'll make it much easier to manage is the way the results are shown to you. So by default, it is going to be in ascending alphabetical order. So if we go and press shift and then N while we are focused on the package list, this is gonna go and change that to be descending order. If we press shift and then S, this is gonna sort it by where the package actually comes from. So in this case, community is going to be at the top with AUR under that, shift and then S again is gonna put it in the other side. If we go shift and then I, this is going to sort it by installed state. In this case, I don't actually have anything that is installed. Let's go over to Xterm instead and try that. So give it a second. Xterm is going to be at the top. If we go Shift I again, now it's going to be at the bottom. Shift M is going to sort it by the package modified date. Generally, this means the last time the package got an update, but sometimes there are modifications to the package that aren't updates. They're like modifying descriptions and things like that. And then shift P is going to sort by the popularity of the package. This doesn't really make any sense in the context of packages that aren't on the AUR because those packages don't actually have a popularity value assigned to them. So I think they're always going to appear at the top, but I'm not 100% sure there. 
And this wasn't in the application when I first tried it, but it's almost a good feature. So searching for term, we can see there's a bunch of packages in here that are listed as community. And let's just assume there are extra ones in here listed as extra, but none of them are here right now. So let's say we just want to limit this search to the extra repo or the core repo or the community repo or anything like that. What we can do is launch the application with the dash R option. If we go and pass in extra and then do the exact same search, none of those results coming from community are going to be listed. But you might notice a problem here. All of the AUR results are still being listed. That's not being treated like a repository in this option, which you might think makes it useless, but it's not. It's just really weirdly designed. So the way you actually disable the AUR is inside of the settings, there is a disable AUR toggle. If we disable that and then try to do a search, now it should be missing all of the AUR results. And there we go. Generally, this isn't going to be a problem, but in cases where this package information section is way too long to be seen on the screen, if you go over to that one, let's say if we go and zoom in on this, if you go over to here, you can actually go and scroll through it. Typically, you won't need to use that functionality, but it's nice to know it's there. But if you just generally don't like the size of the boxes, holding down shift and then left or right is going to change that ratio. Typically, you won't need to touch this, and it's not actually saved in your configuration. So if we go and say, set it over here, close the application and then reopen it, it's gonna be back to the start. Now this is kind of the most important thing and I didn't mention it yet, but if you want to go and install something, let's say you want to install Kitty, for example, all you need to do is find the thing you want to install. Let's say this package right here then press enter on it, and then it's gonna prompt you to go and actually do your installation process. So I've got it set up to use Peru. By default, it is going to be set to be using Yay instead. So if you wanna change that, that can be changed inside of the settings. Do make sure you change this to what you need to be using, otherwise it's obviously not going to work. Now, one thing that might interest you is using separate commands for the AUR and for your regular repos. This is just the way that I generally like to work. I like to keep my system upgrades separate from my AUR upgrades, just in case there's anything weird going on with any of those AUR packages. So if we go and press Control U, this is going to start a system upgrade. If I go and put in my password, there we go. And it's gonna prompt us to go and swap something out. I'm gonna say, yes, swap this out, yes. And there we go, there's, oh, there's a bit more to download than I thought there was. So for now, I'm just not going to proceed with the upgrade. And because this failed or because it just exited the upgrade application, pressing enter is then gonna take us back to the Paxseq application. This is absolutely the way that I prefer it. I've used plenty of applications that use a custom package interface, something goes wrong in the interface itself, and then the entire application just falls apart. Here, because it's relying on the standard applications that you're probably already using anyway, it basically just works. Now, as for this config file, this is located inside of .config, inside of your packseq directory, inside of a file called config.json. All of that stuff that can be set inside of the application can be set here as well. And because this is a JSON file, I don't believe JSON does support comments. Please correct me if I'm wrong there it doesn't include documentation in the config file itself, but everything in here is pretty self-explanatory. Now the application itself doesn't come with any man pages or help pages explaining what these options actually do, but if there's anything you're unsure about, this can be checked over on the GitHub, which I'll leave linked down below. But considering the things are relatively well named, they are like full names and not abbreviations with you know the exception of the AUR, you shouldn't really need it. So this project is maintained by a guy over on the Endeavor OS forums, and as you might expect, it is available inside of the AUR. So if you want to install it like that, that is totally possible, or if you want to, it can be manually installed. And being a fairly simple Go project, it's pretty straightforward if that's what you want to do. Now this is by no means the most feature-rich Arch package install interface you can find out there. If you want something like that, you know, PAMAC and other things like that are totally available. This is trying to be something fairly simple, 
And I think it pretty much achieves that. It has a little bit of roughness around the edges, but this is absolutely a good baseline for an incredible project. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you use Paxic, you're just hearing about it now, I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you wanna become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to something, Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Opton Plays. That's gonna be it for me and I'm out.